I don't know. I don't know whether it's actually referred to as a central ring road. I got to, I got I got told off on a um, cycling one I did. Someone said you realise it's actually it's called the central ring road, not not the inner ring road. So <laughs> so. Um, what was the flower shop called there? We were down there last night. Vickers. Vickers. Vickers Flower Shop. Not Bruce, it was Roy Vickers, wasn't Roy it? Vickers, oh, Roy Vickers, yeah. I've made this video in an attempt to look at four different features of the ring road. The first is the obvious point that it's transport. It's a road, it doesn't have a beginning or an end. It goes round and round. You go on and off it. You can be stuck on it for hours. You could go around it forever if you really wanted to. Uh, and this, for a long time, was car park. Matrix House was there, I think, in Constitution Hill. This was Presley Railway Yards over here. And this was the bit that was car park. Hello, we've got to the night time now. The second point is that it's also a site of history and of different planning regimes, particularly since the end of the Second World War. Different parts of the Ring Road are the result of different plans and different fashions in planning. The third point is, it's also a site of stories. Thousands of us use the Ring Road, sometimes on a daily basis, and things happen as we go around. The buildings surrounding or around the Ring Road all have stories attached to them, the places the roads do, so it's sites of stories as well. And the fourth point is, it has an aesthetic quality to it. You may hate it, you may think it's ugly, you may think parts of it are beautiful, you may have no opinion at all. But you can make judgments about the buildings around it, the way it goes through the urban landscape. So that's what this video is trying to do. I see a beautiful concrete curve that takes your eye into the far distance, especially if you're driving it. It gives you, it, it's almost like it's been designed to give the motorist the modernist vision, you know, a, an urban landscape of. It's Migielski's modernist vision, as far as I'm concerned. But aside from that, it's a beautiful, lovely sort of concrete curve, I think. The, the structure of it is formed from castings, so you can clearly see the wood castings that have been used to retain the concrete while it was being set. So it has a really organic feel to it, which I think is lovely. And also, when you're actually in the roundabout in the middle, it's a really lovely place to photograph with the flyer above the curve heading towards the left and the trees as well because it really adds to this sense of it being organic. Yeah, there's the flowers, which reminds me of Barcelona, I think. The Gaudi Cathedral, I think the spires are quite similar. A bit of a tenuous link. <laughs> it's very difficult to make a road beautiful, really. They tend to look nicer on the plans, I think. And that used to, is it Cora's on the right there? It used to be the Pineapple Park. Yes, so it did. If you, oh, want, if you wanted to chat with an overlocker yeah. on a Friday night, that was the place oh, to go. Oh, person. <laughs> is it a chat, was it? Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. There's <laughs> a hell of a lot of difference to the old bus station where I used to drop customer passengers. The old concrete, remember the old concrete stands? They were um, utilitarian, I think was the word, isn't it? <laughs> it's a teardrop. It's the shape of the Munch's scream, the head, isn't it? You could draw that <laughs> onto it. There are a lot of multi-storey car parks along the route. Smigelski saw them as uh, motor-aged cathedrals. So just as you have cathedrals in the Middle Ages, we have multi-storey car parks. When I cycle through town, I go straight down Churchgate, and then I go where the pedestrian crossing is, and I wait for the lights to change, and then I join the middle flow of traffic as it goes round towards St Margaret's and onto Sandby Gate. You've got to wait because the, the cars do jump the red lights because they're all in a hurry in the morning. The Memsar. Now, I had a blind about. date in there once for Memsar. I know, it's a bit of a disaster. Um, we're coming up to the page. old swimming baths where I did a lifeguard course. That's a long way to the bottom, that was. Five metres down, yeah. free diving oh, down there. Diving. It, it was a picture, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Where was that? So that's where the, the, where the bus station is. Next, next it's to the bus John, station. Yeah, John Lewis is there. Oh, is it? Where John Lewis is? Spigowski wasn't very keen on roundabouts as well, particularly in the Castle Gardens area of the city. He thought that it would break the historical areas into inorganic parts, I think there is the exact word, so that area is actually modified. He was quite keen on underpasses and having multi-level in intersections. Speed limit seems to just temporarily abandon Aban it, <laughs> under that. <laughs> under there. You go under there and it's like, let me get 80 if you can get to 80. Yeah, you wind down the roar yeah. of the, uh, <laughs> like right. being the Monte Carlo. That's, that's it, yeah. 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 And suddenly you're back into your yeah, normal life.
trying to think this is actually not this wasn't on the 52 plan this is these are existing roads really that they've adapted so we're actually at this point we're not on the ring road as planned And the nightclub on the, the right was called Jokers, and it was called. Yeah. It turned into quite a trendy. Oh, kind now of Jokers! Thing. We were in the nightclub um, one night, and a car came crashing into the actual the window of the nightclub. <laughs> I met the bloke who drove the JCB, who went to, well, who went to jail for driving it into, it the, was, into the. Uh, did he go into that jail? Just here, you're at a junction with Lancaster Road. Lancaster Road, because when I was coming to go from the Royal to the General, we used to come up and go across Lancaster Road and just run up Lancaster Road to the prison. That was your way from the Royal to the General. The route you cannot do nowadays, we used to do it in four minutes. No. Hmm. Sometimes with a police escort, sometimes with not It depends what they were carrying. And that was in the middle of the night. That was, you know, it was about three o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. Urgent stuff, Royal to the General, boom, go. So the bit you've gone past there is obviously the, the, the Welford Road Recreation Ground, which they renamed Nelson Mandela Playing yes. Fields, mm-hmm. which they thought was a dig at the, at the young rugby club because they, they were still touring South Africa. So it was the left wing Labour Council having a go, oh. calling it that. And somebody used to go out every night and paint out Mandela so it said Nelson Park. Ah. And then the council would go ah. and <laughs> clean it off, clean it off yeah. so it said Nelson Mandela. Yeah. And the next day he'd done it again, it was Nelson, some sort of. This is speed. Speed is calamity lane, this is. <laughs> Everybody knows there's been Nick going down there. And I just went for a spin in the new VW Passat, um, which I'd never driven before, so it's the first time I'd driven it, and also I didn't realise it had a turbo, or how powerful the turbo was, and um, unwittingly, <clears throat> at least once, I definitely um, broke the speed limit, but wasn't aware of it at the time. And... Uh, Subsequently, I got um, <clears throat> three points on my licence for uh, infringing the uh, speed limit, which was a bit of a bummer. Our plumber, I told him this story, and um, he said, oh, he says, one of my mates went up and down there and got done three times because he broke the speed limit three times in his white van. So there you go. My grandmother died in that hospital. Oh, hospital. that was... Oh. Was this a hospital? Field in, um, yes, and my nana went there. Oh, Regent's Road Hospital. Yes, yeah, my nana went there, yeah. A rather dubious restaurant on the right, so I called it El Morocco, where they used to have gambling upstairs. You're not supposed to know that, but um, one night I had to pick up someone at the El Morocco. Went inside, found him, come out with him. And the police grabbed him, shook him down, and I stood there watching and thought... One of the policemen threw a little packet on the ground. And then the other one picked it up and said, Ah, that's just dropped out of your pocket. And I said, No, it isn't. The other pl- the other mate just dropped that. He said, Shut up, or you'll get arrested as well. Of course, this is in the early 70s, you know. <laughs> they didn't seem to care. <laughs> they had um, a lot of historic buildings which were only just becoming highly regarded as. Um, architecturally or historically important. The obvious example being the Georgian Crescent on King Street, which in the original plan was earmarked for demolition. I think Georgian, uh, in Georgian style in the 60s was, at least from the planner's point of view, was considered something that's worthy of emulation, something that's worthy of retention, whereas Victorian was, was not looked at as particularly valuable. Blame town planners. It's, it's they were beset, weren't they, with, pro- with problems, increase of traffic. What do you do? You couldn't do nothing, could you? You couldn't do nothing. You had to do make a decision what was going to happen. I think I'm right in saying this road already existed, but they widened it and lengthened it, I believe. And uh, actually, there was some protest about that as well. And all these. Admittedly, out of these houses, like Waterloo Street, which is on your right here now, I mean, that was a slum area. People on the houses, a little bit, but I mean, where, when do you start saying, well, do you allow progression to take place, that they move out this to go up a better house, or do you do something to do this and build lines for yourself, houses for yourself, for the, I don't know, I, I, you can be bewildered by it all. 
Yeah. Well, the, cam the camera that got you is probably one on the left here, isn't it? There, is it going down yes. towards off? Yeah. Yes. That's the one. The pesky, mm. <laughs> pesky camera. <laughs> that was the one. Yeah. A straight road will often encourage people to drive quickly. If there's good sight lines, they get a sense of security. The ring road is is um, somewhere where you wouldn't expect pedestrians to feel very confident of uh, having priority. It's a very wide open road, lots of traffic signals. I mean, it's quite a formidable barrier, really, if you're a pedestrian. And a lot of these roads are now criticised by modern planners and sometimes called a concrete collar. The idea that it's actually stopping a, a city centre from growing and presenting this not only physical but psychological barrier to pedestrians. I and mean, people tend not to walk into town so much now and they get the car or, or the bus. I mean, there's this, there's this uh, great emphasis in modern planning for walking and cycling, trying to encourage people to do that. And the, the best way, the back of the rugby ground, there was a black pad, it's still there now. And we used to use that as a chop through, going from one side to the other. You'd get to Walnut Street a lot quicker that way. But yeah, you knew all the rat runs. Uh, um, you, you could get her up across Leicester, but uh, quite, if you knew what you were doing, you'd get across Leicester very quickly without using traffic lights. But you had to know where you were going. And of course, a lot of these streets now that we were using, you can't get down, there's cars parked either side. So you wouldn't even attempt it now. Did you ever play cricket there? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Best than us ever. Eight for two. Bowled him out. We've got a few, <laughs> made a few records at playing cricket, me. I stopped the kids here once in the car and took them out and read the riot act because they were mucking about. Do you Was remember that there? famous bit where they said, just, just, just smile and... Smile and nod and your letters back in the car. Yeah, that mm. was just before the tide. We've got Granby Halls. When I was on holiday in Barbados this year, I met a, a lady who says, I come, I come from market. I said, right, really? on the beach. She says, oh, right. I says, yeah, and, and do you know so and so? Oh, I've heard of him. And oh, she says, well, you do, you would have heard of my father, Jack Gardner, who was the heavyweight champion of Great Britain in the, the 50s. Oh, I says, yeah, I remember seeing him fight Johnny Williams at the um, Granby Halls. There's the victory. I worked there, but they never paid me because I drank too much. How long did you work there? Two nights. Prison is made of particularly small bricks so that it's impossible to make a hole in it. And a friend of mine, as a builder, apprentice, was so daunted by the prospect of his firm repointing it that he walked away from the job. He said he walked up as a sort of 16 year old and he said, We're repointing this. And he said, Just looks at them and why not? We're coming into the old Roman and medieval south of Leicester now. On the right, Fox's Glacier Mints used to have a factory and the area smelt of mint. On the left is De Montford University and on the right there you can see the Jane Temple. And we're coming towards a section of the ring road which they've narrowed. That's the magazine on the left, dates from the Middle Ages, and that was originally stranded in the middle of this road, but they, they changed the carriageways, narrowed them, so it's now actually on the side of the road. I mean, the area around the magazine would have been on multi-levels, so if you wanted to cross the road, you would go underneath the carriageway. I wanted to know the event of car ownership that's happened in this country. I couldn't have possibly realised that. I'm mean, talking about in the paper today, people have got four car families. Well, my, my son is. My son, there's two children who got cars each. His wife's got a car, he's got a car. Find the Lee Circle and Abbey Street and the, the older multi story car parts more compelling because they've got that heritage, because they're from that era of, you know, the Smigielski type era, you know, the, the big plans, the big vision of the city. Uh, but the, the high cross car park still has relevance and interest for me because um, it's, 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 of a, it's of a certain time where engineering, the, engineer, the quality of the engineering is supreme within that car park. And the, and it's also has a sort of archaeology about it in the sense that it was built on Roman remains. Uh, they had to have an archaeological dig to, uh, you know, 
before they could actually build the car park. So, you know, there's already a sense of this being an archaeological site for me, you know, this car park. And in the future, in the future, maybe we'll see that the car park is also a piece of archaeology, just like the remains that were kind of there before. My dad was the uh, head mechanic in the fully fashioned knitwear department there in the um, 70s and 80s. And my mum worked at Kempton's next door for a while. In the 60s there was quite a lot of excitement about um, flyovers and multi-grade junctions. So you have traffic flowing on, on di multiple levels. It's, it's considered not so disruptive really. There, there was a lot of concern when there were building new roads in cities that they would, they would cause severance. So any, any way that they could insert a road without disrupting the existing street plan, plan would be considered desirable. Structures like the Fort and service station on the M6 in Manchester evoke a kind of sort of romanticism about travel and they evoke a whole other areas of travel like air travel, you know, they evoke a sense of the journey as being special and important and you know they sort of romanticise that in, in a way that today's travel is mundane and banal and you do it every day and it's just to work or just the shops or whatever. These sort of structures evoke that sense that you're going on a long journey that's really important, that's going to be really fulfilling and that's I guess that's kind of what appeals to me about them. The key element I'm looking to portray within my photographs is that these structures aren't permanent. You know, we have this sense that they will they will last forever. They appear that they will last forever, these concrete structures, these things that reflect the organic quality of trees which outlive us by many hundreds of years. I'm trying to convey the sense that that is not the case and these roads have a lifespan and that lifespan might not just be how long the concrete lasts. The dash for the middle lane here, because you know that you're going to need oh, the middle lane. Yeah. Everybody yes. needs the middle lane yes. here, yes. no matter where they're going yeah. in the future. It throws you out, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And then you have to go. Move over. And you end up being siphoned off to the right. It's about how long the car is the prevalent mode of transport. So I look at these structures and think how people might have thought about the train system, you know, the railway network sort of. 15, 20 years before the beaching cuts. We might have the road network in 20, 30, 50 years. It might even be here in 100 years, but it can't last forever is what I'm trying to say, you know, and that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to give a sense of archeology. span I'm trying to, I look for a sense of archeology span in these structures, and they're the ones that appeal to me the most that I have, that suggest they aren't gonna, they, they aren't gonna be there forever. There is a, they are archeological sites. They are, it's the beginning of the end of car culture effectively.